He has to finish the story. Guys, it's phenomenal AJ Styles, and you're watching Brett Live. What is going on, guys? Brett Live back with another video. And today, we are talking about Monday Night Raw, February 26th of 2024. This show was freaking awesome. And the only reason I'm splitting it up from SmackDown this week, normally I do the weekend review on Saturday, as you guys know. The only reason I'm doing it separately is because SmackDown is a sold out show this Friday, and I feel like it's going to be such a hot show that it deserves its own video. And this Raw in a whole two was freaking can kick butt we're gonna talk about it right now from san jose california let's jump right in he opened up the show with mommy rhea ripley hot off of her win at the elimination chamber up against nia Jax when she retained her women's championship if you guys haven't seen lemon elimination chamber review video check that out it's on the youtube channel and i was like who is rhea gonna get interrupted by literally couldn't have been a more perfect person. Becky Lynch comes out, the winner of the Women's Elimination Chamber match. The winner of that match, of course, gaining the match against Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania. So Becky comes out, confronts Rhea. Rhea reminds Becky that Mommy's always on top. We all know the whole stick there. And Becky Lynch said, nah, not this time. I'm taking down at WrestleMania, and it's all over for you, Rhea. And then Dominic kind of stepped in, too. He's being kind of a douchebag. Well, this is a pretty solid way to open up the show. But then right after Becky Lynch was on talking, Nia Jax... Nia Jax randomly attacks Becky Lynch. Rhea Ripley decides not to help because, hey, this is none of her business now. She already beat Nia Jax. So Nia Jax beats the hell out of Becky Lynch. Then security actually pulls Nia Jax off of Becky Lynch. I thought for sure she was going to get the best of Becky Lynch. But no, thank God for Adam Pearce and the security team. They were able to take out Nia Jax before she could destroy Becky Lynch. Not a bad way to open up the show. Sami Zayn's path to WrestleMania is still unclear. Or is it? He went one-on-one -on -one with Shinsuke Nakamura, and when they first announced this match, I was like, oh, again, here we go again. We're going to have to watch Sami Zayn lose. But that wasn't the case this time. It was a freaking solid match. In the end, we did see Sami Zayn hit a halula kick to the back of the head of Shinsuke Nakamura, and then one to the front of the head, so two halula kicks. And then he was able to pin Shinsuke Nakamura, one, two, three. And my goodness, his path may start becoming clear. Does he want Gunther? He wants the Intercontinental Championship. He confronted Gunther backstage, guys. Sami Zayn could be the guy. He really could be the guy that takes the IC title off of Gunther. But, dude, I loved this match here between Nakamura and Sami. It was great to see Sami finally get a victory and just proving to all of us that, yes, he does have a spot on the Mania card, and I'm so I'm so excited about that because I love Sami Zayn, bro. I'm a big Sami Zayn fan. Like he was literally the best thing about last year. But dude, he just needs a little more time, and bro, he's he's gonna be the best thing about this year too. Literally, just give him time. He'll be Gunther. Literally. Elsa Green was not happy about being eliminated out of that battle royal by Raquel Rodriguez, so she requested a match with Raquel. Don't know how smart that was because Raquel made quick work of Chelsea Green. Raquel didn't even have to put makeup on. It was easy work to check out, take out Chelsea Green. Or I'm sorry. Chelsea Green! One, two, three, light work for Raquel Rodriguez. Kind of boring, though, I'm not gonna lie. Imperium make their entrance. Gunther talking about how he's still the Intercontinental Championship and he's wondering who his opponent will be at WrestleMania. He called out all the rumors. Is it gonna be Chad Gable? Is it gonna be Sami Zayn? Could it be our truth and I was like, okay, maybe Sammy comes back out, or maybe Chad Gable comes out. The Judgment Day's theme music hits. I was like, ooh, which member of the Judgment Day is interested in the Intercontinental Championship? Damian Priest was very heated with Gunther. He said, we're bringing that IC title to the Judgment Day. And then it all broke down after Gunther shoved Dominic. Damian Priest was not happy about that because I believe Dominic is going to be the guy that confronts Gunther and faces Gunther for the IC title, or at least the guy in the Judgment Day that won the IC Championship. Oh my god, could you imagine if he won that? The booze would be tremendous. Jesus. But yeah, after he shoved Dominic Mysterio, Damian Priest was heated. He wanted a piece of Gunther, but his boys held him back, including JD. I just don't have a figure of my boy. But this was a solid promo. Really got me thinking, like, okay, who is Gunther actually gonna face? I could see them maybe doing a Fatal 4-Way, possibly. 
probably because dude you have to have Gable, Sammy, and maybe Dominic Mysterio in there. So I would assume it's going to be some sort of triple threat or fatal four way, fatal five way if they want to add our truth. But uh, this was a solid. Uh, this was a really solid promo here. I enjoyed it. Right after the Judgment Day Imperium promo, we jumped right into our hardcore street fight match that the New Day requested. They wanted to finish the story between them and Imperium, and this was a heck of a street fight, bro. I haven't seen a street fight match this good in a long, long time, bro. This was a kick butt match. Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, Ludwig Kaiser, Giovanni Vinci. They fought all over the arena from Xavier Woods using cups to smash over the face of Ludwig to freaking Kingston being sent through tables, kendo sticks tearing open flesh. This was an amazing match. In the end, I was shocked to see it, but Imperium picked up the victory over the New Day? What? This shocked the crap out of me. They were able to take him out. One, two, three. I'm like, what, bro? No way they just beat the New Day right now. They literally did it. I mean, it was no disqualification, so anything goes. So I can't really say that they cheated. Like, bro, anything went, and the New Day lost to Imperium. And my God, did I love this match. Wow. And, dude, hats off to hats off to both teams, honestly. Like, they did literally a great job. I loved this match. Back on the topic of the Intercontinental Championship, uh, Chad Gable staked his claim with Adam Pierce. Yes, I do know that is Paul Elring, I'm posing that as Adam Pierce, but he walked in Adam Pierce's locker room and said, I need that match with Gunther at WrestleMania. He made my children cry at that one episode of Raw when I almost had him. I need this match. Chad Gable's another guy that needs to finish the story. <laughs> will Adam Pierce consider these pleads? I guarantee you he will, and he'll make some sort of triple threat in WrestleMania. I guarantee it, man. This was a solid promo here from Gable, though. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark had a great point. They were like, why did Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae Ray get the championship match at Elimination Chamber and not us. I was like, bro, they're so right. Like, they've been decking every tag team. How come they didn't get the match? I know why, because Indy Hartwell's from Australia, bro. That's the only reason why. But Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark wanted a little redemption here, so they challenged Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae to a tag match, and they took the W. Uh, Shayna Baszler, the submission magician, was able to tap out Indy Hartwell very fast. One, two, three. And these are going to be your next opponents, guaranteed for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Kabuki Warriors, you better watch your back, because Shayna and Zoe are coming for you. Our truth was reminiscing being in the Judgment Day when he went in the locker room after they left the show. He was like, man, I'm just thinking about the good old days when I was in the Judgment Day. I'm like, bro, they turned on you multiple times. Why are you still reminiscing on this so Shawn Michaels and Triple H approached him with the Miz and they sort of condoled with him and they were like okay man we got a plan to get revenge on the Judgment Day and our truth was all game he's like let's do it but hey let me just grab my cordless box TV really quick I was like what on earth dude this man is crazy oh but this was a funny promo I enjoyed it DM Hunk and Seth Rollins cut a absolutely amazing promo before Seth Rollins got involved here uh, Drew McIntyre was calling out CM Punk because Drew McIntyre had got injured, I guess, at Elimination Chamber or something with his eardrum. And he's calling out CM Punk when he said, even though I'm injured, I'm still going to be at WrestleMania. I'm not weak like CM Punk. I'm like, bro. He even sat crisscross applesauce like CM Punk. I was like, bro. And then he called out Seth. Seth comes out. Drew says, quit this bloodline stuff. Let's focus on us for WrestleMania. That's just the smart thing to do. And Seth Rollins says, no. Some risks are worth Taking. Oh my gosh, I loved this promo so much, bro. If you guys missed it, please watch it. WWE's YouTube channel, absolutely fantastic. There's some great details in this promo. Seth Rollins has to help Cody Rhodes. Seth Rollins has to take down the bloodline. And he has to retain his championship at WrestleMania. Bro. Oh, gosh, this was so good. Liv Morgan got a chance to take out the irresistible force, Nia Jackson, one-on-one -on -one action, but it got squandered by Becky Lynch. Bro, Liv Morgan was actually kicking butt in this match. She was avoiding attacks from Nia Jax. Nia Jax was going into steel stairs, steel posts, and I'm like, bro, Liv could possibly win this. Here comes Becky Lynch, making it all about herself, attacking Nia Jax, even though I kind of see where Becky's coming from. Becky did get attacked in the beginning of the show in that promo, so I kind of understand this. But, bro, at the expense of Liv Liv's loss? I don't blame Liv one bit for confronting Becky Lynch after the match backstage. Like, bro, come on, Becky. Are you serious? This is for another time. Seriously. But yeah, Becky Lynch ruins the match, and everybody sort of just goes their separate ways. Not bad, but bro, come on. Drew McIntyre and Jey Uso got into it backstage after Drew McIntyre said what, Jey Uso, what happened to Jey Uso last week. He deserved it when he lost his chance at the Intercontinental Championship. It broke down. Some referees broke it up, and I can't wait for their match that's going to be happening on Monday Night 
era, bro. This is such a good background story right here between Drew and Jade, how they like still hate each other, but the story isn't really going on. Like, it's so good, bro. I love these two going at it. And believe it or not, we had Grayson Waller in the main event of the show. He went one-on-one -on -one with Cody Rhodes, had Austin Theory on ringside. I'm surprised Theory was on ringside after Grayson Waller did not help Theory on the Grayson Waller effect this past Saturday at the Elimination Chamber. I was like, why are you not, why are you out here helping him? He didn't help you. Cody Rhodes was able to take the dub, avoid the interference from Austin Theory, and then Grayson Waller took the L after Cody Rhodes at the crossroads. One, two, three. But I'm like, wait a minute, why does this show still have eight minutes left? That's because Paul Heyman's voice was heard. And I, and I actually saw him in the interview that happened earlier in the show when J Michael Cole said, oh, Paul Heyman's here. I'm like, I already knew that. I saw him in the background, bro. So Paul Heyman makes his voice heard, comes out with three former policemen, I guess. I was like, this is stupid. Just call him some random security guys that you're paying. Like, literally, that was stupid. Uh, so Paul Hammond's just like, yeah, I'm here with these guys. And they just kind of jumped him sti uh, shield style. And then Cody Rhodes kind of took out the henchmen. And then Paul Heyman took one more step. So Cody Rhodes took him out. He sat in that chair. He used the chair. And I was like, okay, not bad. I guess Solo and Jimmy weren't available <laughs> to get beat up by Cody Rhodes. So they just hired some random dudes to get beat up by Cody Rhodes. Uh, not a bad way to end the show. Cody Rhodes was intensely hyped, bro. Because he's like, bro, if there's a bloodline attack, I'm ready. I have a steel chair. I'm tired of being nice. Where are they at? I'm going to take them out. I'm like, bro, that's sick. I love that. Uh, but yeah, celebrating on the show. Really showing how intense Cody Rhodes is about finishing the story. I'm going to rank Raw out of 5 right now. Let's do it. 4 to 5. I thought this was a great show. I really enjoyed it. Let me know your ranking down in the comments down below. My favorite moment was Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. Their promo was so good. I loved it. Let me know your thoughts on that one down in the comments down below. The street fight was good, but this promo, woo! I loved it, bro. Had me very invested. Once again, that was Raw Setup Style. Let me know your thoughts on the show down in the comment section down below. And stay tuned this Saturday when I talk about SmackDown and The Rock's return. And I'll see you guys then. Right alive. Peace. Out.